Good evening and welcome. My name is Jerry McDermott. I'm the Media and Communications Manager here at Fingal County Council, and I'll be your host for tonight's webinar, which is part of the process that will ultimately lead to the creation of the Fingal Development Plan for 2023 to 2029. It's often said by people in my business that you should never work with children, animals or technology because they never do what you want them to. So if we experience any technical difficulties this evening between now and eight o'clock, do bear with us as we endeavour to resolve them. Just over a month ago on March 12th, the development plan process began with the publication of the Strategic Issues paper. The purpose of this document is to stimulate debate on what we need to be looking at and what we need to do. It is also designed to generate feedback from the public and stakeholders on what they think. It is the start of a two-year process that will end in March 2023 with the adoption of the six-year development plan by the elected members of Fingal County Council. We are now at the first of three opportunities for the public and stakeholders to make their views known. Submissions can be made up to May the 12th on Fingal County Council's consultation portal www.consult.fingal.ie and if you are making a submission, please remember two things. It should be strategic in nature and it should not be a zoning request as these will not be considered at this time. There is further information available on the development plan process on our website, which is fingal.ie forward slash development plan. The strategic issues paper contains seven key themes and between now and April 22nd, we will be hosting four webinars to give you some background into these issues and an opportunity to pose questions about them. Tonight, we are discussing people and place and we will have two presentations followed by a question and answer session. If you want to ask a question or make a comment, please use the Q&A facility, which you should find in the top right hand corner of your screen. Now, before we commence our presentations, Here's a few facts about Fingal. The county has a population of 296,000 people, according to the 2016 census, and is the third most populous local authority area in Ireland after Dublin City and Cork County. Between 2006 and 2016, the population in Fingal increased by approximately 23%, or just over 56,000 people. There was an increase of 7.4% or 22,000 people between 2011 and 2016. And this was almost double the national average growth rate of 3.8% for the same period. The average household size in Fingal is 3.03 people and the population of Fingal is projected to further increase during the duration of this development plan period. These key facts all point to the requirement to provide well-serviced, well-connected towns, villages and communities. So the new development plan will seek to enhance quality of life for all and it is important that we achieve the balance between sustainable growth and the provision of high quality new housing served by enhanced public spaces and community infrastructure. The intention will be to provide resilience through enhanced transport connections and by focusing investment into the creation of public realm and community infrastructure, all of which will ensure the county remains a high quality location in which to live, work and do business. So. Let's get things underway. Tonight we have three guests with us. Matthew McAleese is the Director of Planning and Strategic Infrastructure here at Fingal County Council and is the person overseeing the development plan process. Fanula May is our County Architect and she will be discussing the importance of high quality urban design while Margaret Geraghty, Director of Housing and Community Development, will speak about Fingal's approach to housing and community facilities. Following the presentations, we will take questions to Matthew, Fadula and Margaret. These can be typed into the Q&A box and as many as possible will be facilitated in the time we have available. Those that are not answered will still be considered in this consultation process. So before we hear from Fadula and Margaret, I'd like to invite Matthew McAleese to formally welcome you to this evening's event. Matthew. Thanks a million, Jerry, and you're all very welcome to this the first development plan webinar and I'd very much like to thank you for taking the time out this evening uh, to join us here. If you strip everything back, uh, development plan is a shared vision of a better future and how we all want the county to look at the end of the next plan period in 2029, together with the objectives that will be required to implement and ultimately achieve that vision. The vision should be aspirational, but it also needs to be deliverable and while this can sometimes be difficult to imagine at a county or strategic level, the information booklet that 
we hope that you've all now received by post and is also available to view on the Council's website, includes a series of questions on some of the big picture issues that may be of importance to you. The importance of your participation in this process cannot be overemphasised, as the next development plan will look to respond to your aspirations for the county, while also addressing any concerns you may have. We look forward to hearing all of your comments and questions this evening, and while we may not get to answer all of them due to time, I can assure you that they will all be considered in the drafting and preparation of the development plan. This evening's webinar is about people and place and the importance of building well-serviced, well-connected towns, villages and communities. As the population of our county continues to grow, it is essential that an adequate supply and a range of housing types, sizes and tenures are available to meet the needs of our growing population. In line with national and regional policy, the new development plan must identify appropriate locations to accommodate this growth, particularly in locations close to public transport corridors and in the existing towns and villages where vacant sites offer the potential for redevelopment. This growth must be achieved in tandem with a renewed focus on designing high quality neighbourhoods serviced by well-designed outdoor spaces and multi-use areas. Since the publication of our current plan, national and regional planning policy has placed increased emphasis on the need to ensure the sustainable use of land and in particular, the achievement of compact growth and appropriate densities. An increase in the proportion of more compact forms of growth in the development of our towns of all sizes, from large towns to small villages, has the potential to make a transformational difference. It can bring new life and footfall, contribute to the viability of services, shops and public transport, increase housing supply and enable more people to be closer to employment and recreational opportunities, as well as to walk or cycle more. The benefits of well-planned, well-designed towns, villages and communities also include shorter commute times, cleaner air and a smaller carbon footprint. This has important implications for tackling climate change and taking proactive steps in securing more sustainable power and energy resources. Building resilience into our urban and rural settlements will be a key requirement of this new plan. At this point, I would again like to thank you for participating in this evening's webinar, and I will hand back to Jerry. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Fanula May, and I'm the County Architect here in Fingal County Council. And I'm here to speak on the importance of high quality design and the necessity for good pub policy in order to design and build successful places. And this is under theme, theme one, people in place as part of our new development plan, uh, number one of the seven themes. Good urban design is not an abstract ideal. It's a matter of creating the right conditions to make place design. The planning system in general and the process we are now beginning of making a new development plan for our county has a central role in achieving the same. Most importantly, the planning system through its implementation of public policy provides the opportunity to ask what sort of places do we want and how can we promote the qualities we want? The planning system has always been concerned with getting the right mix of land uses such as housing, retail or industry in the right location. Now we recognise that making successful places also depends on getting the physical form of development right, i.e. good design. Design is the instrument that realises the aims of the planning system. Every town, village and place is special to the people who live and work there. Urban design is relevant, relevant to those people and spans from the largest to the smallest scale and from the most historic town centre to the newest suburban development. Urban design is the process of shaping the setting for life in cities, towns and villages. It's a process that involves many people, from the people who live in the area to the politicians who represent them, to many different kinds of professionals that are involved. A successful outcome depends on, on all these groups working effectively together. 
Every day, countless decisions are made that have the potential to make a piece of a town or village or an area a little more lively, welcoming and pleasant, or a little more hostile, unpleasant or unsafe. These decisions can enhance or erode a place's distinctive character. Some of these decisions concern major developments, but even the overall effect of many small developments, such as house extensions, shop fronts and infill schemes can change a place dramatically for the better or worse over a few years. By focusing on quality in urban design and architecture, from the large to the small, designers and the planning system can make a difference and ensure the change is managed well. Quality urban design reflects and enhances the distinctive character and culture of our urban environment and recognises that character is dynamic and evolving, not static. It ensures new buildings and spaces are unique, are appropriate to their location and complement their historic identity, adding value to our towns and cities by increasing tourism investment and community pride. So how do we achieve this? There are certain characteristics associated with well-designed places. They generally have a complementary mix of uses and activities that are fit for purpose. They accommodate uses well and incorporate mixed compatible uses along with a variety of tenures. There's a variation in layout and building form and diverse communities and cultures are welcomed and catered for. There's a range of architectural styles and now Biodiversity is incorporated into the design process. They encourage easy movement, connectivity and permeability, a place that is easy to get to and move through. Its density is highest where access to public transport is best. Its roads, footpaths and public spaces are connected into well-used safe routes that lead to where people want to go. They include successful public spaces and a high quality public realm that provides a sense of well-being and amenity. They are places with routes that are lively and pleasant to use, that have a feeling of safety, security, are uncluttered and easily maintained. They may have carefully chosen and detailed and integrated public art, are suited to the needs of everyone, including disabled and elderly people having well-designed lighting and street furniture and have attractive and robust planting. They're able to adapt to the changing needs and circumstances. They're places that can change easily, can accommodate flexible uses and gradual change. Buildings and areas are adaptable to a variety of present and future uses and allow for the reuse of important historic buildings. They're efficient in how land and other resources are used. They have an appearance that's appealing and appreciated. They have a distinct positive identity and a sense of place or history. They have character, possibly with locally distinctive patterns of development and landscape. They probably have locally distinctive buildings, streets and street patterns. Their distinctiveness can also derive from skylines and roofscapes or building materials. Above all, they are not standard. Good places also have continuity and enclosure and clarity of form. There are places where public and private spaces are clearly distinguished. Streets, footpaths and open spaces are overlooked by buildings. There's a clear distinction between public and private space. There are no gaps in the line of buildings and streets and other spaces are enclosed by buildings and trees of a scale that feels comfortable and appropriate to the character of the space. There are no leftover spaces unused and uncared for. They're legible with a clear image that's easy to understand with landmarks and focal points. They accentuate important views and provide gateways to particular areas and have good signage and way markers. They're sensitive to context. Quality urban design sees buildings, places and spaces, not as isolated elements, but as part of a whole town or village. Urban design has a strong spatial dimension and optimizes relationships between buildings places, spaces, activities and networks. It also recognises that towns and villages are part of, of a constantly evolving relationship between people, land, culture and the wider environment. Quality urban design takes a long term view. It recognises and builds on landscape, context and character and results in buildings and places that are adapted to local climatic conditions. Good urban design examines each project in relation to its setting and ensures that each development fits in with and enhances its surroundings. 
and understands the social, cultural and economic context, as well as the physical elements and relationships. It ensures incremental development contributes to an agreed and coherent overall result. As Fingal continues to grow and mature, it's important to develop in a way that it builds community. Development which may accomplish goals of infill density and utilization of vacant or underutilized property, but is not ex executed in a way that meets that that meets the other goals of high quality design and is not desirable. With more compact development patterns comes inherent benefits to the community. Compact developments provide for more efficient use of infrastructure, more walkable spaces, enhanced transit opportunities, affordable housing opportunities and numerous environmental benefits as well. Part of this is the concept of town centres first, and it is an aim of good urban design to ensure that this happens. While many citizens promote and support the provision of compact development, a disconnect appears to be present in providing compact development. Infill projects which occur when vacant land is proposed to be development between existing places is often met with resistance from adjoining neighbourhoods, residents, site traffic, density and degradation of green space as some of their many reasons for opposition. While many of the concerns are legitimate, it's important to realise that good design can correct those issues. Again, ensuring that new development enhances existing neighbourhoods. The development plan offers an opportunity to improve knowledge about infill and redevelopment policies. Residents can gain a better understanding of how these policies help to meet the vision of the community on a number of levels. Quality urban design also encourages creative and innovative approaches. Creativity adds richness and diversity and turns a functional place into a memorable place. Creativity facilitates new ways of thinking and willingness to think through problems afresh, to experiment and rewrite the rules, to harness new technology and to visualize new futures. Good urban design is a powerful tool for achieving a higher quality of life, greater economic vitality, and a more efficient use of resources. It is key to making places where people will want to live, and which will nurture economic activity, and where people are caring of and are invested in their environment and place. Thank you. Thank you, Fanula. And if you have a question for Fanula, please type it into the Q&A box and send it on to us. We plan to spend around 30 minutes answering your questions. And if your question doesn't feature, don't worry, it will be passed on to the development plan team for consideration. Now, our second presentation this evening is from Margaret Geraghty, who is the Director of Housing and Community Development here at Fingal County Council. And she's going to talk to us about the approach to housing and community facilities here in Fingal. Good evening, my name is Margaret Geraghty. I'm the Director of Housing and Community Services in Fingal County Council. And this evening, as part of our Fingal Development Plan webinar, I'd like to take you through some of the, an overview of the work of the Housing and Community Department. This evening's um, theme um, is about people in place. People in place is a significant um, element of the work um, of the Housing and Community Department. And I suppose our core objective um, across the uh, department is that we provide housing for the community, that we provide community facilities, and that we support that sense of place making and place shaping and build sustainable communities across the county. From a community development perspective, the community development section in Fingal um, started work in 2004. Um, and on an ongoing basis is critical and central to the work of local communities. Some of the work that the Community Development Plan is involved in is obviously forward planning for the development of new facilities, for the development of new residence groups and associations as the community grows, and that we work with a network of house voluntary and community organisations and statutory agencies across the county. Our core work is around planning for consultation processes, doing pre-development work with local communities, 
carrying out the types of needs analysis and research and local consultation. That's an integral part of the community development plan and of building new and sustainable communities. And one of the key areas that we're also involved in is what we call the Fingal Schools model, where we endeavour as part of the development of new schools within communities to provide for new community facilities as part of that, um, that community. There are 31 facilities across Fingal. It's critical that we work to ensure that these facilities are operational, that they're offering a good variety of programming and that um, the Community Development Office and its staff provide the type of interagency support and community development support that is needed in order to ensure that our community facilities are accessible to all. That work obviously comes in various different guises. We have the strategic support that we offer in terms of the setup of new facilities, working with our PPN, setting up new groups that are important within individual communities. An example of that is our Fingal Integration Forum, as Fingal is a very diverse county and a very young county. It's important that we, from a community development perspective, work to support an inclusive approach uh, and a socially cohesive approach to community development across the county. We provide, we have a facilities support network which meets on a regular basis and through that facilities network we look to support the ongoing work of voluntary and community groups um, across Fingal in our own facilities and in facilities that aren't owned by Fingal. And on an annual basis through our capital and our revenue budget together with the elected members we set out funding support on an ongoing basis. The purpose of that support is to ensure that our community facilities are maintained appropriately. Our capital support is about considering areas where new community facilities will be required. An example of that is in Meekstown in Dublin 11, where we're working to bring um, a new community facility for that uh, community um, through the planning process. We have a similar project in Baldoyle, which is underway as well, with a similar purpose. And you will see as part of our housing developments at Ballymastone um, and Mulhuddard and in other areas across Fingal, we will look to bring forward and ensure that community infrastructure is, is in place um, as we bring forward new housing developments. I just wanted to mention to you as well the work of our sports office, which is also part of, our, of the community development um, office within, within the housing and community department. The sports office provides a range of programme delivery, a range of partnership and leadership approaches and encourages participation of all groups and all abilities as part of its work. It's really important that we focus on how we get that information out there, how we communicate with our local communities and how we link in with the other sports governing bodies to ensure that we provide a very um, comprehensive range of sports programming, healthy, um, active sports strategic view for the county. This year and all of last year has been such a significantly different one for the community and sports office. Um, a lot of the work that the office does and that the staff does is actually on the ground and it's operational and it's out there working with communities. So over the last year, we've had to change and modify that model, model and adapt it to the circumstances that we have found ourselves in. And we have done that and we've conti continued to do that um, into the future. And hopefully now as we can get back to more normal day to day um, life over the next couple of months, then our sports office and our community development office um, will be back out there working with local communities to ensure that we continue to provide the types of services that our citizens expect. I'd just like to move on now to our housing um, development area and for the purposes of this, I just want to show you some of the large mixed tenure developments that are underway um, across the county. Fingal is a very young county, it's a growing county, and it's important that we plan as part of the development plan process to provide the type of housing that's needed for our citizens and to provide that in the areas where it's needed and to ensure as part of that development that there is the appropriate facilities in place to support large scale housing delivery. 
First slide here is uh, Bally Mastone and Dunne Bate. Um, we are working, um, we're about to finalise a tender process here now, and um, this is a very important scheme for us in, uh, north, in the north of the county. You'll see the red line map, uh, which indicates or gives you an idea of the size of the development. And the blue line is the new developer, um, Lyha, uh, the new road um, to service these lands, which did re receive government funding. And it has unlocked these lands. And this, again, is a really important part of what we try to do is looking at the infrastructure that's required to unlock lands for housing development. And that we look to do that as part of an integrated uh, approach to the development of new communities. We expect the Ballymastone Land Bank to deliver in the region of 1,200 homes. The mix will be 60% private, 20% private affordable and 20% social. The next um, housing scheme that I'd like to talk to you about is our Churchfields Land Bank in Dublin 15. This land bank um, is between the existing Wellview um, estates in Dublin 15 and the new Damastown uh, Road on the other side. Um, it's the area that is well served by um, infrastructure and what we've tried to do here is, is to look at this land bank and provide much needed housing, um, mixed tenure housing into Dublin 15. An important part of the overall design of the scheme is to look at the existing area in the Wellview Estates to improve the um, walkability and um, the road infrastructure through existing estates to look at the land that is there already that's used for recreational purposes and then to look at an overall comprehensive development plan for church fields that will provide affordable and social housing, affordable rental and affordable purchase and that will look to provide community infrastructure, creche, community facilities and recreational facilities through cycle paths and walkways and permeability um, for, for the Church Fields Land Bank. Bringing forward developments of this size is a significant task. It's a very complex process, many, many aspects and layers to it. And it can take time, which can be frustrating for people um, who know that a development is coming, um, but it's trying to figure out where it's at. So an important part of what we do is to consult with our local area councillors to keep them up to date in terms of where Church Fields is at, how the proposal is um, being developed through a master plan for the entire site um, and then how that will um, move forward from a planning perspective. People will be aware that already within this area we have provided a number of housing schemes as part of um, this entire land bank. And we have further um, elements of the scheme moving towards the planning process right now. The Churchfields Land Bank has a potential for a thousand homes with a breakdown of 60% affordable and 40% social. Again, what has unlocked this site for us is the service sites fund uh, provided by government, which help, will help the necessary roads and green infrastructure that is provided to build a sustainable community at this location. I just want to give you um, a bit of an update on affordable housing and new affordable schemes um, that are uh, under development at the moment. Fingal has just launched its first affordable housing scheme in a decade in uh, Lusk at Dunemer, and we're working on a second affordable scheme now at Haystown in Rush. And again, our councillors are working with us um, to provide us with um, the approval to bring this scheme forward to planning. We will have uh, a greater level of detail in relation to the operation of affordable housing schemes as they come on stream with an online application process and guidance for applicants. I just wanted to show you some of our technology that we use within the housing department at the moment to help guide our strategic planning and uh, how we will deliver housing into the, over the next number of years. And again, we have mapped housing across the county so that we can see in different areas the number of um, schemes that we, houses that we have, uh, whether they're with an approved housing body, whether they're our own social housing stock, whether they're with HAP, 
or whether they're a RAS property or a private rent of property. And again, having this map of our social housing schemes assists us when we're making decisions on new areas where there are land and how we bring that forward for development. But it also assists us from a community development perspective as we plan the provision of community facilities within areas, but also as we provide community development support on the ground to local um, residents and local communities. So thank you for um, the opportunity to present to you this evening and um, I will hand you over now to the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Um, and we've lots of questions coming into the question and answer box, uh, which is up in the top right hand corner of your screen. So don't forget that those are not answered will still be considered in the consultation process. So let's now see if we can try and get through as many questions as we can between now and eight o'clock with Matthew, Fanula and Margaret. And Matthew, I'm going to start with you because we've had a question in here in regarding submissions and one of our uh, viewers wants to know what is the timeline for submissions and how do you make a submission in this process? I think uh, Matthew, you just your microphone, if you could just switch it on, please. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, well, there's there's three main um, opportunities for the public to get involved in the plan making process. Um, we're at the first stage, which is pre-draft, um, and um, everyone has up until the 12th of May, 11.59 to be e exact, um, one minute before midnight on the 12th of May to make their submissions to the pre-draft. And as, as I said in my earlier presentation, um, we have uh, prepared a strategic issues paper um, that has been sent out to every household in Fingal, so we hope everyone has that now at this stage. Um, and that has some um, a series of questions under a, a number of themes of the development plan um, that will hopefully um, uh, raise people's um, awareness of some of the key issues, some of the key development issues that are existing in the county. So um, uh, that's that that everyone should have that now and everyone has until the 12th of May um, to make a submission itself and um, we take submissions online um, or by post. Um, we have a dedicated www.consult.fingal.ie. Um, that's probably the easiest way to to make a submission, but we also welcome submissions in in the post and they can be made out to the development plan team and posted into Fingal. Uh, the county hall here in Swords. So I hope that answers that question. Yes, thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, Finula, I have one here now for you. Um, what are the are there any specific plans for public realm in in, in any of our towns? And uh, your microphone as well, Finula, please. So just while Fanula is getting her microphone switched on, I just would like to remind you that um, if you do want to make a submission, it's that website is consult.fingal.ie. Um, I think Fanula, you'll find the microphone um, is just down at the bottom of your screen. Right, I'll tell you what, while, fin while Fanula is sorting out her microphone, I might just move on to Margaret and uh, just ask her, there's a question has come in here for you, Margaret. Um, it's in regard to how we prioritise community facilities and in particular, do we facilitate faith-based facilities? Thanks, um, Jerry. Firstly, in terms of how we prioritise community facilities, um, there isn't a one, um, one rule fits all approach, really. It depends whether it's part of an existing community or um, a new community that we're building. So in cases where we're developing new housing developments um, on a large scale, we would look at the outset to plan in what type of community recreational and supports facilities are needed. In existing communities where um, they are growing or expanding because of the age profile, um, we would often have uh, 
very strong representative residents associations that we would work strongly with and who we would have supported um, to, to become uh, part of um, community development across the county. Um, what we do in that place, uh, in that uh, scenario then is, um, we do a needs analysis, um, we carry out research and we carry out local consultation. So in terms of whether a community facility needs to be provided or one needs to be expanded upon. We use that um, approach where we actually carry out needs analysis. We look at the information we have. We look at um, the age profile in the area. We look at the, the needs of the particular community. And as part of uh, then um, doing that research, we carry out a local consultation process. And that can be quite comprehensive um, with local community, with schools, uh, with sports clubs. Um, and right across the um, types of uh, community workers and community development organisations that will be working in a particular area so that we build a strong picture of what it is um, that's needed. And then obviously we have to look to our own capital plan, our own capital programme to programme in facilities in terms of us making money available through our annual budgetary process. Um, and I referred in my presentation to Meekstown and Baldoyle, which are our two newest community facilities under development. Um, and they are going through the planning process now and funding has been identified for that within the current capital programme. And over the last number of years, we've also completed um, other community uh, development projects. There was a point I made earlier as well, where we do work with when the Department of Education are looking to identify school lands as part of an expansion. We do look to work with the Department of Education then to make community facilities um, and school halls a shared facility between the Department of Education and ourselves, and that works well for us. Specifically in relation to um, faith-based community facilities, I might just ask um, Matthew McAleese to, to, to come back in and there and comment on that. But we do have a practice throughout our community facilities when they are open and we will get back to having them open again, that we do make rooms um, and facilities available for uh, all faiths and none who may want to use um, a room within the community centre or otherwise uh, for faith based activities. Thanks, Margaret. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're very aware that um, there is a growing number of uh, new churches and new faith based communities and that will require facilities um, in line with our growing population. Um, a number of our current zoning objectives do facilitate those types of facilities and, and obviously we, we do try and locate those within close proximity to the communities that they serve and also uh, in close proximity to public, tra in public transport as well. Um, I would really encourage um, any of those um, uh, religious groups um, to um, to make a submission um, at this stage of the development plan. It is, it's, it's critical that we understand the demand for new spaces out there. Um, and then we, uh, as, as I said earlier, we, we put in the uh, objectives, um, whether they be zoning objectives or written objectives within the plan um, that will facilitate uh, an increase in those type of facilities. Thanks, Jerry. OK, um, thank you, Matthew. Um, I go back to Fanula now. I think she's got her microphone uh, issues sorted out. So Fanula, the question that was asked uh, to you was, um, do we have any specific plans for public realm in any of our towns? Um, we we do, Gerry. Um, a, co a couple of our, our bigger projects actually are, are largely public realm based. And um, one of them I could talk about is our the Arbal Brigham project which has um, several public realm ele elements of it. One but that people might uh, recognise is the Key Street and Harbour area of, um, of um, Balbriggan Town, where we plan to do a, um, a regeneration and redevelopment there of the open space areas between, uh, we'll say, um, the top of Key Street and right down to the harbour and including the harbour area. Um, and this has a really exciting opportunity for Balbriggan and it, it makes great sense for the town and will also link in with the um, works planned for the Breemore Reg Regional Park and for our coastal greenway. Uh, we're also planning major um, uh, 
Public Realm Works in Swords, our county town, um, associated with the Swords Cultural Quarter project. Um, the main part of which is a new county library for for the county, but um, linked to that is a, a large element of public realm to link the whole area of, of of or the areas in that part of the town, county hall, a new library, our courthouse, and the uh, uh, Swords Castle. Um, so that will be a really big piece of uh, new public realm that will be added to the to the county and it will also link in with another project in swords, which is the sustainable swords project, um, which um, will look at Main Street and other parts of the of the town um, with regard to developing the public realm. But public realm um, in how we approach um, many design projects, these days is a is an element of it nearly every project. There's very few projects that wouldn't have some element of the public realm and how we deal with it and how it's uh, designed in from from the, the beginning. Um, so it is an important uh, w um, element of how we design and how we approach all our projects. OK, thank you, uh, Fanula. Um, now let's let's go over to uh, the southeast of the county to Holt and Matthew, there's a question here for you in wanting to know how do we protect the special amenity of Holt? Thanks, Jerry. Um, and I'm sure um, everyone aware, is aware of the, the Holt special amenity area order, um, which was confirmed by the minister back in uh, 1999. Um, we we have a specific policy um, within our current development plan that looks to protect and enhance the character, heritage and the amenities of Hoth in accordance with that order. Um, and we will um, be bringing that into the new uh, the new development plan as well, 2023 to 2029. OK, um, th thank you, Matthew. Um, I've won now and it's, it's sort of directed to both Fanula and Margaret, um, so maybe you might both uh, want to answer this, but it's, it's asking the question, how can we provide housing choice for older people in mature areas such as Malahide? Um, or Fanula, do you want to come in first? I'll, I'll go first. I mean, it, it. I will admit it is sometimes more more difficult in uh, as a local authority for us in developing um, our 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 own um, sites to acquire sites in mature mature areas. But nevertheless, when we do, very often they they're more central, so they immediately do suggest that they would be suitable for older people, um, and we do do that when when we can. We also adapt existing housing that we. Um, that we own um, with particularly with uh, uh, the, the needs of um, older age groups in, in mind. And to that end, we work closely with um, uh, um, several groups. We work with Age, age Action Ireland. We um, train our own architects to be aware of the issues involved. And we hope that we can find uh, the right size for all of our, our, um, of our, our tenants. But um, it is it is something that we're we're conscious of because it's important that you get a mix. So that's always in our in our mind. Um, Margaret might have more to add there. Thanks, Fanula. Um, I suppose just to to add to what to the points um, Fanula uh, makes, just in terms of sometimes the challenges of finding sites in in in. Um, uh, older areas can can be a challenge for us but equally um between myself and the my team in housing and the county architects department we do look um at what we can do where private development is underway and to remind people that at uh, that there is a 10% requirement in relation to private developments that's made available uh, for social housing purposes. And we look to partner with uh, approved housing bodies um, in that regard um, to bring forward uh, schemes that may be suitable for older persons. We also from time to time will look for opportunities, uh, you know, maybe in older buildings where we may be able to get a partner to come on board with us who could work to uh, bring older buildings uh, back into use or, or units within towns back into use for housing purposes. So it is one of the things that, that can be tricky for us, but it is an important part of what we do. And we have a very strong um, statement in our development plan um, on the Age Friendly Ireland programme, and we're very committed to that in Fingal, and we work uh, right across um, the region. 
uh, with the support of um, Age Friendly Ireland to look at ways in which we can improve delivery of older persons accommodation through existing schemes or through new schemes that might be requir um, required. Um, and there have been uh, some opportunities where people look to maybe divide their property in two or as uh, Fanula has said, where there may be an opportunity to adapt an existing property. So um, we, it's something that's very important to us and we try to achieve opportunities where we can in that regard. OK, thank you, Margaret. Um, I have a, an, an, another question. Uh, it's, it's aiming more at the local people. You all might want to contribute this, but I'm going to ask you, Margaret, first to come in on it. And uh, it's asking what is being done to make sure that there are schools, sports facilities and community facilities in place for young people close to home? Um, thanks, Jerry. Yeah, to, to build on, on what I said earlier, um, as part of the development of, uh, well, if I can talk about um, Church Fields, for example, the, the, the development that's under, um, that we're planning in Dublin 15 and similarly in Ballymastone in Dunabate, as part of the, the development of the master plans for how those uh, areas will be brought forward, we do look to provide um, to make land available first to the Department of Education in terms of school facilities with our own planning and strategic infrastructure department to look at what leisure and recreational facilities can be brought um, um, on stream. And then um, on my side of the house, the community development hat, what actually how we can put or provide community facilities as part of um, that aspect of a, of a big project. And equally then how um, as part of each phase of a project that you ensure that we have good leisure and recreational facilities available. So it's an integral part of how pl forward planning is done in Fingal. Um, Matt might want to, to comment on that from the development plan perspective. And what's been really key for us um, in recent times is the availability of service sites funding and that programme of funding from government, which do uh, which supports us to put in the type of recreate the, the type of physical infrastructure like roads and services, but equally as we try to ensure that as we bring uh, projects forward for development, that the recreational leisure facilities don't get left behind and that they are included as part of the overall plan. M Matthew, do you want to come in on that? Yeah, I, I think, thanks Jerry. Yeah, I think um, uh, Margaret's covered off um, uh, all, all the major points there, but again, just using another example, um, Margaret showed the example there of, of Ballymstone and Donna Bate, uh, a significant council owned land bank that we hope um, to to develop um, over, you know, the next 10, 15 year period. Um, it's it's it it's has the capacity to deliver in the region of a of about a thousand new residential mixed tenure homes, and we what we want to do there is make sure that in tandem with the delivery of those homes that the the schools the recreational facilities all the amenities that that new emerging community will need will be delivered, um either before or in tandem with the housing. You know, we're we're it's not just about housing delivery per se. It's about creating new sustainable communities. Um, it's making sure that there's there's types of units within there that um, uh, address all of the you know someone mentioned there just the uh, housing for the elderly. It's making sure that uh, all 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 types of housing is provided in that for you know first time buyers, people that want to move up, so, uh, downsize, um, and then uh, units that people can retire to as well. So all all, all of those cohorts need to be addressed, and and that's what we look to do um, as as we deliver new housing in the county. OK, um, Fanula, you, you were talking there about the public realm and we have a question in just in relation to that and it's in relation to finding the right balance and wants to know, would you anticipate this development plan will enshrine the principle that the public realm uh, must be looked after in our town centres in Fingal? Um, absolutely, um, and we would in, um, anticipate that you know those those policies will remain in our our new plan, and that we will um, be able to um, describe them and develop them um, very carefully. The main uh, thing I think to consider is that it's um, 
our county, each place, as I said in, in my talk, each place is, is unique to itself and has its own character and its its um, its own uh, fabric. So I think it, the important thing is that that uh, it's not uh, one design fits all. I think each and every one of our towns and villages needs uh, individual design solutions for the for the public realm. And what's right for uh, the big the Balbriggan project that I talked about um, or swords even would be a different solution for Rollestown or Ballybuckle or the Knoll. So we um, look closely at, at the character and the receiving environment of every place um, uh, when we look at designing um, public realm uh, for, for all of our uh, of towns and villages throughout the county. Right. I have another one for you, Fanula. Um, how can we prioritise rural placemaking and a review of the importance of rural villages in North Bengal in transitioning to a more sustainable model? Um, I think um, the our, our, we're very lucky in our in our in our towns and villages in. Um, in Fingal, in that they they remain very coherent and individual in their in their own right, um, and the the way with that we develop them is um, for carefully controlled through the development plan, and we have uh, village development schemes, we have design schemes for, for the villages and the local area plans as a mechanism, and each of those ways examines absolutely minutely all of the aspects of, of um, the towns and villages prior to making um, a new individual plan, which sort of like is like like a subset within the um, the development plan. So I think that's how we um, uh, guide it. And we're very careful that um, from a sustainable point of view that um, that that is is controlled and that the it's the the right type of development in the right type of village at the at the right quantum and size for that place. And um, Matthew might want to come in, in on that a bit more. Matthew. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, no, look, our, our rural villages are, are a key asset of the county. And as Fulis pointed out there, um, everything that we do um, is to try and protect the uniqueness of those um, rural villages. Um, the the growth has to be managed, obviously, so that that uh, that unique asset is protected. And um, as Fnula has said, we have a number of different planning tools which we use, um, which are below the development plan. So we have our local area plans, we have our master plans and we have our village design statements. Um, they they all get into uh, the detail. We have, we have a lot of uh, consultation with um, uh, the local communities in terms of how and where they want to see development grow in their rural villages. Um, and uh, obviously it, it, as, as part of this development plan, there will be an emphasis now in on looking at uh, how they sustainably grow so that they have all the facilities, the local school, the local post office, and they're all well connected in terms of uh, good cycle and food path network. OK, and um, just another question, Matt, you might want to deal with and Margaret may want to come in on this as well, is um, what is the projected housing need for Fingal over the next 10 years and what proportion will, Fing will Fingal County Council provide? I can take that. Um, yeah, well, I suppose, Jerry, the, the development plan sits in a hierarchy um, of, of plans. So at the very top of that hierarchy, you have the national planning framework. And then below that then is the, the regional spatial and economic strategies. Um, and they they set out the growth for each uh, each county. Um, for Fingal, um, that, that's in the in the regional um, and the RSES that set at 369,000 by uh, 2031. Um, yeah. And in the last census, um, we had 296,000 persons. So um, uh, you, th that that's essentially the level of growth that we expect to reach. Um, that that the target is, is is set out within that. And and obviously we have a piece um, of work to do now in the coming months. Uh, about where the most appropriate allocation um, of that residential growth should go. So again, uh, set in the policy of compact urban growth um, in close proximity to public transport, 
Um, so, so do, do, that that that's a job that we have to do now um, in the coming months as we prepare the the draft plan. Yeah, and um, Margaret, does that does that help you in in terms of what you do within the housing uh, department? Yes, it does. And um, in conjunction with planning, we look to provide to prepare a housing strategy that forms part of the development plan. And we will be we will be working on that over the over the next number of months as well. And the purpose of that will be to set out the um, level of social housing, particularly that um, we believe is needed across the county over the years of the development plan. And it also there's quite a quite a lot of analysis takes place um, in relation to affordability as well, um, which then um, is useful for us then in terms of the development of affordable housing um, across the county and um, you know the affordability of that for individual um, households. OK, thank you, Margaret. Um, just one thing I'm noticing with the questions that are coming in, we're getting a lot of queries about transport, rural transport, active travel and, and car parking. These are going to be discussed in more detail at the connectivity webinar and uh, really th that's where all those questions will be answered. So if you can come back, book in for that one and come back, we'll answer them that night. And the connectivity webinar is going to be on April the 22nd at 7 p.m. So we look forward to seeing you then and, and seeing your questions. Um, we're running out of time here. We've just got a few more minutes left, so we're just time for one more question. And Matt, I might ask it to you because we've been asked um, as regards where the development plan sits particularly in relation to on board Panola? Um, well, in every planning application, the, the, the every planning application is assessed against the objectives of the, um, the development plan. And um, when, when the local council is assessing planning applications, it must be in accordance with those uh, objectives. Um, they get the core strategy or the zoning, or any of the the numerous objectives that are contained and set out in the in the development plan, the when the, the board um, uh, the board at, at the minute uh, there's a uh, there is a special process set up which expires um, around this time next year, um, which is the strategic housing development. So housing developments of 100 or more units goes directly to the board, and the local authority have a very specific role to play. Um, as part of that process, but ultimately the decision is made by on board Planala. They um, in that within that legislation, um, there's uh, very specific criteria whereby the board can materially contravene the Fingal development plan. But it's 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 only it's it's only with very specific criteria. So really, the the um, I, the, the the importance of the development plan can't be. Uh, overemphasized um, because uh, every every planning application that that uh, that is assessed um, is assessed against the objectives of the development plan. So it, it is a it is a very very important document to all development um, uh, in in the county. Okay, um, thank you, Matt. Well. Unfortunately, the clock has caught up on us and we've run out of time. Uh, if your ha question hasn't been answered, don't worry. It will be forwarded on to the development plan team and will be considered as part of the preparations for the draft development plan. Um, just looking at the at the questions that we, we haven't been able to get there, there's been a lot of queries about particular places like Lusk, Donabate, Balbriggan, Malahide and Blanchestown and about the issues of accessibility and open space, the mix of household and they will all be considered in, in the development plan. And um, don't worry about that. But thank you very much indeed for your questions and your comments. And thank you all for logging in this evening. We're going to have another webinar on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. And then we'll be discussing heritage, green infrastructure and coastal management. So I hope you can join us then and to book a place, just do what you did tonight. Go to fingal.ie forward slash development plan and we look forward to talking to you then. Don't forget also that you can make a submission to the development plan at consult.fingal.ie up until May the 12th. And if you want to watch tonight's webinar again, a recording will be available later this week on the development plan website. My thanks to Matthew McAleese, Fanula May and Margaret Garrity for joining us this evening. I hope, like me, you found what they had to say interesting and informative. So until our next webinar, goodbye and stay safe.